It's the day after Justin Steele's crazy injury on opening day. What does this mean for the rotation, for the really tough April schedule, and how long will Justin Steele be out? Let's take a look at that. Hey, Sedum Nation. So just a really crazy, stupid, unfortunate way to start opening day. Not only did it feel like September again because of every single game going down to the very last pitch and it just feeling like there is a stick up the Cubs' butts, but you get Justin Steele in the fifth inning throwing an absolute gem and he gets injured. So we're going to examine this a little bit. Make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure that you are commenting what happened in your stomach as soon as you saw Justin Steele grab that hamstring in pain. Now, as you can see, I am in uh, the beautiful coast of California. I'll give you a quick little look. That's Morro Bay, and we've got the beach right behind me. Yeah, this it's not too, not too bad of a setup, guys. As soon as I release this, the MRI could come out, and all of this video that we're talking about could be a moot point, but I just wanted to get some thoughts out there, especially based on what I think this is going to do for the rotation. Now, after the game, Craig Council did say that he believes it's a hamstring strain and that Justin Seal will end up on the IL. Now, that's not the worst news in the world. I did a little bit of research, and a hamstring strain, whether it's grade one or grade two, seems to be about a one to two week recovery time. And on top of that, it's really early in the season. You know that the Cubs are not going to push him, so they're probably going to give him another week. So let's just call that three weeks and then maybe one simulated game or a couple bullpen sessions and you're looking at a return in early May. This hurts for a number of reasons, the biggest being that this is the toughest April schedule that I can remember to date. And for those of you that are thinking, well, maybe he does come back in April, all I can tell you is you remember Jake Arrieta, right? How many hamstring issues did he have at the end of his career? Now, luckily, us Cubs fans didn't have to experience much of that. It happened mainly with the Phillies, but it seemed like every other week he was ending up on the IL with a hamstring injury, and so this is just something that I don't think that the Cubs are going to mess with. But it's really going to hurt in April, especially when you look at last year. Last year, the Cubs literally lost their playoff opportunity because of the terrible May that they had. And yes, you could say that they also lost the season in September where they went 12 and 16, lost 12 of their last 17 games. But a lot of that had to do with injuries. A lot of that was just extremely bad luck. Whereas in May, right, it was just kind of this feeling of every single close game was just coming down to the end and they weren't able to close them. And that's the kind of stuff that led to the demise in 2023. So who's to say that the season cannot be won or lost in April as well? So when you look at the schedule, I've got it up in front of me. You've got 16 of the first 27 games are against playoff teams from 2023. Six of them are against World Series contenders in the Rangers who won the World Series and the Diamondbacks. Uh, by the way, both on the road, so that's wonderful. Then you've got three against the Dodgers at Wrigley, which is just going to be another insane test. Then there's the West Coast trip. The same thing happened in April last year. They took a really wild West Coast trip, came out actually doing really well, but this time it's nine games against the Padres, the Mariners, and the Diamondbacks. And then the very next day, there's no off day, they just go right back to the East Coast against the Marlins, and they end the April schedule with the Astros, Red Sox, and Mets, who look better as well. I mean, the only teams that feel like a break in that is you have the Rockies coming up, and maybe the Red Sox are a break. It, it's one of the toughest Aprils that I can remember to date, but May doesn't get any better. May looks like this, six against the Braves who won their division, seven against the Brewers who won the Central, seven against the Pirates who honestly, I think are gonna be a surprise team. I think they're gonna take the Central by surprise. I don't think that they end up being a last place team like usual. And then you've got your first trip to St. Louis. So. It, it does not get a whole lot easier from here. And one thing I can say is that the saving grace is that the first 12 games, there's three days off. So yes, that gives the starting rotation a little bit of a break. The unfortunate thing is that you have Shota Imanaga who's used to pitching every six days. So even with Jamison Tyone being down, you still looked at, well, we still need five pitchers because Shota Imanaga needs that extra day off. It's early in the season. Now, do you not give Shota that day off? Or do you push it and here's some other options. I mean, you've got Hayden Wisniewski. Does he get the call up, right? That was, 
he was sent down, still working on getting lefties out? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that that's the answer at this point. Ben Brown dealt all spring. I want to say his ERA was like .64. Does he get an emergency call up? Now, in my mind, the Cubs, the way that they were going to kind of approach it, especially the way that you saw them throw him at the end of last year, it seemed like he was going to kind of get the Justin Seal treatment and get called up, you know, pitch in the bullpen a little bit, then get stretched out into a starter. But desperate times call for desperate situations. Ben Brown looks like a guy that could get that call up. What about Drew Smiley? Oh, I, I just I went saying that, especially after him getting the L last night and just looking like the same kind of pitcher from last year, not fooling anyone. Um, does he get stretched out? Does he get a start? I, I don't want to see that. Now, do a lot of you out there, Setup Nation, get your wish and get Trevor Bauer? No, I'm sorry. You're not going to get Trevor Bauer. That is not going to happen. $720,000. I know it looks like a really great steal for him to come in and we need the bullet, the pitching depth just it's not going to happen i know i know you're holding out for it it's not going to happen just get over that uh mike clevenger is still out there i know you kind of roll our eyes well he's past his prime guys he had a good year last year nine and nine 377 era over 130 innings pitch that that looks like gold right now and you're telling me that guy's not going to come in for three four million dollars just to prove himself right now because no one else is is paying him i i why not? That's what I say. I, I think that there's an opportunity there. I think Jed should pick up the phone. I think she, he should at least have a phone conversation. Yes, there's depth in the minor leagues, but there was not a plan to do it this early. You wanted to see guys like Wisniewski, guys like Brown, guys like Horton go down there and get comfortable so that when they do get called up in May or June, there's some innings under their belt. There's some confidence. They've worked on some things. I don't want to see that now get pushed because of the first game of this season. You also don't like what this does to the guys that are currently in the starting rotation. Suddenly Kyle Hendricks now has to be an ace again. Shota Imanaga has added pressure. Jordan Wicks has added pressure. Thank goodness for Javier Assad, right? Last year, I don't think that if this kind of injury to the top two starters happens early in the season, I don't know what they do. Uh, now at least there's four spots that are filled with guys that are legitimate starters, and then you figure out the fifth spot. But thank goodness for Javier Assad. But I, 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 the thing that concerns me the most about this is not Assad or Hendricks. It's Jordan Wicks and Shota Imanaga. With them being both rookies, the added pressure that that could put on top of still learning hitters, learning how to pitch in the major leagues versus the minor leagues or the NPB, uh, there's there's a lot of added pressure that is not needed this early in the season. So once again, the MRI comes out today. We'll see what happens. In fact, as soon as I release this, we might even get a notification and this video might be a moot point. But let me know in the comments what you think. How long is Justin Steele going to be out? And how are the Cubs going to deal with this? Who do they call up? Who gets stretched out? Let me know. We'll talk to you soon, Setup Nation.